start. <coughs> Now, should we talk something about uh, propeller induced vibration? Okay. The main prime mover is a propeller in a ship. And from maintenance point of view, we always try to select a single propeller. And therefore, a lot of power is to be transmitted through one single propeller. Usually, we have four bladed, but there is no restriction on that unless it meets our requirement. So, we can have a three bladed propeller, a four bladed propeller or a five bladed propeller. But in general, you will find that majority of the single screw ships are provided with a four bladed propeller. And therefore, we will find that each propeller blade is transmitting a huge amount of power to the ship. Or rather, <coughs> when we say uh, the diagram, how the power is transmitted. Let me talk about that also. I should have drawn the radar somewhere here. Anyway, I think I'll just change the diagram. I am not trying to draw the bulkhead, double bottom etcetera, just machinery is there, thrust block is there, shaft is there, this thing. Now, when you try to measure the power here, it is indicated horsepower we say. When you try the measure the power here, we say BHP, British, not British, but brake horsepower. And then, <coughs> when you try to measure the power here, it is the shaft horsepower. And at this place, we said delivered horsepower. And then, what is what makes it move is the effective horsepower. Okay, so from here onwards, ultimately, when we reach from here to here there may be 50 percent losses and <coughs> we try to move the vessel. So, a lot of power is being delivered here and in the process each system will try to induce some sort of an excitation. So, we talked about this because the number of cylinders and the eccentric crank shaft you can have some sort of an excitation from here. So, that that excitation may be the number of cylinder into number of rpm because for each revolution of the crank shaft um, all the cylinders will be fired one after another if it is a two stroke engine so okay if it is a four stroke engine then every two revolution there will be one firing per cylinder so in that case um, <coughs> the engine is going to produce a frequency which is rpm multiplied by the number of cylinders or number of cylinders divided by 2 depending on 2 stroke or 4 stroke. Then depending on the gearing ratio that uh, crankshaft rpm multiplied by the gear ratio will be another exciting frequency which the shaft is going to transmit. And then with that frequency or that rpm the shaft is coming here and the propeller is mounted here. 
process that shaft rpm multiplied by the number of blades on the propeller is going to give you another exciting frequency. So, these are the main frequencies which will be generated here in this system because of the main machinery. Similar things will hold good for other rotating parts like your gensets, your pumps, any other rotating part. Okay. <coughs> so, now we will talk about propeller induced vibration. Now, if the propeller is perfectly balanced and this delivered horsepower by each blade is also balanced, then there is no eccentricity and we should not get any propeller induced vibration. But what happens is that each propeller is tailor made or custom made to suit the ship, it is manufactured in that fashion. It is not mass produced, but it is a tailor made equipment or an item which is to fit into a particular ship. And if you know how the manufacturing process takes place, you basically cast the propeller and then you try to grind the propeller blade to the given profile. Okay. So, here we introduce eccentricity. of two types, one is static and another is dynamic. <coughs> In the static eccentricity, we say that the mass center of the propeller do not pass through the center line of the propeller shaft. If the mass center of the propeller is slightly away from the center line of the geometrical center line of the propeller, then we introduce what is known as the static imbalance in the propeller. Now, many a times this static balancing is done by grinding the propeller blades properly. If some mass is extra here, you try to grind out just like the weights, you try to remove something and fill it up with some other material, lighter material and try to do that. So, static balancing is normally done, but still uh, there may be some sort of a imbalance remaining there. But dynamic imbalancing is ought to be there due to various reasons. The reasons can be non identical plates see there are three or four blades though they are made from the same drawing same dimensions but they may not be identical there may be some difference number 2 when it is moving in water it is developing the thrust and that thrust development property may vary from or the thrust developed by the propeller may vary from position to position. Okay. Thrust produced by a blade varies with position. blade position because it is rotating at some time it is in the top, some time it is at the bottom and therefore, now there are many reasons for this and we will see that reason. And then because the propeller blade is working behind the ship and the shape of the ship in the after end condition is very complex, therefore the flow past the propeller blade is non-uniform.
again one can say that why the flow is non uniform there are two things once because of the complex shape the angle of attack changes there the entry point or the entry uh, direction of the water to the propeller disc is changing and another thing because it is moving and viscosity is there there will be a wake behind the propeller so presence of wake behind the behind the ship And we can also add another part here that sometimes at a particular point the blade gets overloaded or the lifting pressure is such or pressure behind or the negative pressure at the back side of the propeller is such that is falls below the vapor pressure of the fluid or the water which generates some sort of cavities there so cavitation of the propeller <coughs> so let us see how a propeller blade will we know that the propeller blade is something like this an aerofoil section and flow past the blade is at this angle and therefore when the flow takes place it goes like this and this side is the negative pressure this side is the positive pressure and therefore the resultant works like this and you get the lifting here or the thrust in this direction okay. now if the blade profile is slightly changed I am using a different color to show that. Then the flow pattern will change here and there will be if this is slightly more here more negative pressure will be there. Okay. So, the lifting property of this changes. <coughs> so, suppose one blade is of this section it is very difficult to draw actually identical blades for me. And another one is something like this. both are looking same, but they are not identical. Then the lift generated here and lift generated here will be different. So, I have written that thrust generated by this is T, this will be T plus A or T dash. Okay. If this is T, this is T dash. T dash can be slightly more or less than this. <coughs> so, each blade if, if we consider that the four blades are there
and we, each one of them is generating a different thrust. So, <coughs> the thrust center will be something of the centroidal of it. If this generates T, this generates T, this generates T, this generates T, then all the T together will be considered as generated from the center. But if this is generating T, this is T plus delta T, this is T plus delta T and this is also T plus delta T, then it will be slightly off center. Okay. So, the thrust generating property of each blade under the uniform flow will be such that it is going to give you some sort of eccentricity, right. And therefore, <coughs> this will try to give you a frequency which is same as the shaft frequency. But as we are talking about the position here, if it is in this position, the flow past the propeller blade may be like this. If it is in a different position here, maybe that the flow changes to this direction. Why? Because the lines here, if you draw, and if you draw a line here, then this will go like this. So, the water here will be directed in this direction and the water here will be directed in this direction. This is what I am trying to say that this direction is this and this direction is this way. Okay. So, even if the propeller blade is same, depending on the position that the flow past the propeller blade will change and once the flow past the propeller blade changes, the lift generated by the propeller or the thrust generated by that particular blade at different position will keep on changing and that will be true with each one of them. So, with the assumption that suppose that all the propeller blades are identically made, each one of them when it comes down or when it makes a uh, complete revolution, its thrust generating property will keep on changing. Does it infer <coughs> that the thrust imparted to the blades when the blades are at the top position is much less? We do not know actually whether so it is less there. The water, huh? mm. water flow to the blade is more from the bottom. No, the actually the actually the you know, wake is also there and the flow is really complex. So, it is the combination, I mean it is the actual situation behind the condition which is a very complex part and people still keep on doing uh, the research to find out how, how the wake is there and how it affects the propeller performance. Wake is basically a backflow because fluid is real fluid, there is a viscosity and there is some um, tendency that it will follow the ship. So, depending on how the water is churned there with the propeller, propeller action is there, it is churning in a particular direction. Okay. If you are having two propellers, then the churning may be counteracted, but it is a single propeller, it is churning in one direction, the ship is moving in one direction, the water is cross flowing there, which is mixed with this churning and therefore, the actual flow pattern behind the ship is too complex. You cannot say at which position the maximum lift will be generated in which position, it may change. Say at this instant, at this position the maximum thrust is being generated. In the next instant the ship moves ahead, the flow pattern may change there and it is a different position where the propeller will generate the maximum thrust. So, the water flowing to some parts of the blade is at a faster rate than at other parts. Yes. So, automatically no, but that keeps on getting modified. It will depend on the rudder angle, the current condition. 
No, suppose rudder angle you have kept it at 0, 0 head, still it will change because actually what is the current there? There may be in the sea there must be some um, ambient current due to change in water temperature. When you are churning the water, uh, hot water from bottom may come to the top and so on so forth, you do not know. Okay. So, what happens that the thrust generating property of each blade will keep on changing. So, now in actual case what happens that because they are tailor made, they are non-identical and therefore because of the non-identical nature, if we assume that the flow past the blade, all the blade are uniform, then also we expect that it will try to excite the hull with the shaft frequency. Now the blades are moving and we assume that the blades are non-identical due to some reason or the other. The flow past the blade will keep on changing and one will affect the flow onto the other blade. So this blade is coming here, when it goes away the other blade is coming here, but, but it is trailing behind its own effect and that will change the flow pattern to this blade. So at that position even if the blade is identical, the thrust generating property may still change. So each one of them will try to generate a frequency of the shaft, but there are four. So four times the shaft frequency or the blade number of blade times the shaft frequency will be generated. Okay. So <coughs> because of this reason you are getting a shaft frequency excitation, you are getting shaft RPM multiplied by number of blades frequency. Then let us assume that Say I have two types of turns for the ship, one is a clear cut up and another one is having some sort of a sole peak what we say, okay, which supports the rudder here and this is the configuration. Obviously this type of arrangement you will find in small ship not large ship, large ships will have normally this, a smaller ship will have like this. Now if in this particular case as soon as a particular blade comes closer to the hull, it will try to impart the energy to the hull and excite it with that frequency. So if there are say um, z number of blades, z times the blade will come closer to the hull and shaft rpm is n, so n into z times there will be a frequency generated here. In this case, n times z will be, z times n will be one frequency which will be generated by this here. Now if there are even number of blades, that means if there are four blades here, rarely we have two blades, if there are four blades, if one comes closer to this part, the next one will go closer to this whole piece here. Okay. So you generate this n times or z times the n frequency will be generated by this, but if the number of blades are odd, then the one which comes here there is no corresponding blade which is coming here, but when it passes then another blade goes there. So here you have twice the z time 
n frequency. Suppose let us take an example that in a tugboat you are having say three bladed propeller. So, if the one blade is coming here, the next blade is not coming here. After this blade moves out from here, the next next blade goes closer to this and generates some sort of a frequency here. When it moves out, the third blade goes past this. So, in one revolution three times on this side and three times on this side, so six times it will be generating the frequency. So, six times the frequency here and if it is even number then number of blades times the frequency. So, these two possibilities are there. So, you have shaft rpm number of blades frequency, then you have shaft rpm times twice the number of blade frequency. Now, if we want to get the effect less, then there has to be some sort of a minimum distance kept between this tip here and this piece is here. You will see that the rules will tell you that at 0.7 r, what should be the minimum clearances given here and what should be the minimum tip clearance given here. Closest distance need not be vertical or at an angle. No, this tip distance and this, this distance. At 0.7 are this distance and the tip clearance. The rules will specify that what should be the minimum permissible. So, that it does not, of course, the rule will talk about the uh, strength from strength point of view. So, they will say that if you are giving that uh, clearances, then the shock given to the after structure will not be much, the impact sort of a loading. In fact, that also helps here. Okay. And even this dip, this clearance will also be mentioned, because this part is not much here. If you see here, the cross section, it will be like this and the blade is moving like that. But here, this this blade is coming here, this piece is only this much here. So, the effect here is not much, but the effect here is from here to here. Okay. So, these clearances will be declare, uh, dictated by the classification society. In the process what happens that to maintain the clearance, you cannot have a propeller blade which is straight, rather it has to be raked. rake angle. Okay. Usually some 5 degrees, 6 degrees of rake angle is given. It will be nice if one can have the propeller to be absolutely straight, so that the stresses at the root of the propeller blade is not much because it acts like a cantilever. This is generating a thrust here, obviously this is acting like a cantilever. So, there will be some sort of a bending moment and there will be a torsion. So, at the root a lot of stresses are there, but if you try to rake it, then that uh, effect increases. Okay. Then the torsion is increased and therefore, the root thickness increases. So, from strength point of view, we would not uh, like to have any rake, but from vibration point of view to maintain the minimum clearances, you require some rake in the propeller. Then one has to check up that
you see if, if the negative pressure goes below uh, the vapor pressure of the water then you will find that the water starts evaporating and there will be cavities here and as the water flows these bubbles will keep on imploding and suddenly a position will come when the bubble is not in a position to withstand the pressure and it collapses. So once it collapses the water rushes in here and at a particular position you will find that the pitting takes place. You must have noticed that the propeller blade gets pitted and that is because of this reason. If you heavily load the propeller then also the same thing will happen because the negative pressure here and the negative side increases that means it goes below the vapor pressure. In fact it has been found that basically it is not the water vapor pressure which creates the problem it is the dissolved gases when you reduce the pressure there they try to come out and much before attaining the uh, water pressure press here the vapor pressure here the bubble starts forming. So the dissolved gases they come in the form of the bubbles. They are also function of temperature. So now as soon as the bubble forms here you will find that the flow pattern changes. See it, it was supposed to travel like this now because of the presence of this the flow pattern changes. and that changes the hydrodynamic lift property of the blade. Okay. And then it collapses so there will be some sort of a disturbance in the flow and therefore some sort of uh, excitation will be generated from the blade here. So cavitation is one of the forms. Now in some cases what happens when the RPM is too high like in uh, small powered engines the RPM is high and one cannot stop this. In that case we try to design the blade uh, with a cavity here. So the cavity itself is a part of the propeller lifting surface and the flow is such that the cavity is taken into account. So that is and we try instead of a bubble cavitation we try for a sheet cavitation a continuous cavity and that type of a propeller design is known as the fully cavitating propeller. Okay. Mostly you will find that the cavitation starts from the tip of the blade. Why from the tip of the blade because the linear velocity there is more. If the linear velocity is more then the velocity of water with respect to the propeller blade is high there and the lift generated is more. So it starts with the tip cavitation and therefore you will find that when you are making the propeller the propeller blades are flatter towards the tip. Okay. So these are the causes by which uh, propeller tries to induce some sort of vibration and one has to take into account at the design stage to reduce this effect. Because once the thing is built you cannot do it and therefore at the design stage itself one has to see. Now what should be the uh, what should be the uh, propeller output and the what diameter. So that is why you will find that a tug whose basic demand of the thrust is much more because it has to pull or push a particular ship and bring it to the position but being a very small uh, craft and with a heavy pulling force obviously the uh, thrust generated by the propeller blade is much higher there. And therefore you will find that the, pro the uh, tug propellers or the tug design is such that Cort nozzle. Cort nozzle is a different thing altogether uh, but what they do uh, to start with 
that they try to give a permanent rake to the keel so that the draft aft is always more than the draft forward and you can fit a larger propeller in the place that is number one. If that also do not satisfy then to avoid the cavitations you try to put a cot nozzle. Cot is basically a trade name the engine bureau cot so you say that it is a shrouded propeller so you cover it so that cavitation do not take place and you are giving a jet effect and therefore the thrust generating property of the propeller increases. Even that helps in maneuvering also if you are having a swiveling type of nozzle. Okay. Any questions so far in this case then we can answer that. No, actually what it ensures that uh, when a uh, high power blade is a high power propeller is there and if the flow of water is not sufficient then it will start cavitation. In fact, high RPM, high loading there is every tendency that the air will be sucked from the atmosphere to the propeller. It is not only that it is going to go below uh, the vapor pressure, but it is going to suck air from the atmosphere. So, when you shroud it, you are trying to restrict that air entry number one. You are trying to say that the propeller blade is moving in the water and then the design of the nozzle is such, it is a nozzle. So, uh, it tries to give you a uh, nozzle effect also. But the friction increases there. Mm, you are carrying, you are increasing the wetted surface area of, of additional item, you have to overcome that friction also. Normally, it is given for tugs and small ships. Bigger ships, you have large space to give the propeller diameter. <coughs> which has a have a, a guide nozzle hmm. and the tendency of all foreign parts gets to get stuck over there is yes the, the it is it is a problem it is a problem yes ropes yes yes it is a problem so you require a net for that also and that also increases the resistance and and sometimes all this garbage gets stuck to it restricts the uh, flow to the propeller that is there because at the entry level you have to stop it. So, very small clearance between the tip of the blade and the normally 3 to 5 millimeter. Now, that creates another problem that the tip will get eroded and therefore, you require a special type of uh, material. Now, if uh, two materials say propeller blade is made of manganese bronze and if the nozzle is made of um, mild steel then coming very close to each other there will be galvanic action it? and galvanic action will try to corrode the propeller blade. So, to avoid that and moreover uh, you are giving this effect uh, wherever you are having shallow water and so on so forth and you require the high power output. Now, wherever you have shallow water, obviously the mud particles or the sand particles will be moving along with the water. Even if you have say 8, 10 meters of uh, water depth in river Hooghly, when it is moving you know that uh, uh, your silt will be moving along with the water. It is always a muddy water and that sand particles however small it is will be doing some sort of an abrasion there. Okay. So, along with the corrosion there is erosion also. So, what is done to avoid the uh, galvanic action they use a stainless steel inside. So, stainless steel clad material is used for the inner side and uh, erosion will take place of course, stainless steel is slightly harder. 
the erosion had taken place there. study about <coughs> a propeller which was shut blasted for cleaning mm. by error mm. and then the blades broke off yeah the pilot made a voyage same me. the iron particles were embedded in the surface which created the anodic cells and in turn maybe anodic cell maybe because of the sand blasting the surface has become pitted it must have become pitted, so stress concentration is another. And stress concentration is a very serious thing. Uh, many a times, you know, the corrosion creates stress concentration because the thing is pitted like this, you know. If suppose this is the surface, a smooth surface, and after corrosion, It becomes like this. Now, there is a small dent here. Now, if if the force is given in this direction, and it behaves like this. Now, if you take the stress contour here, stress variation, you will find that if this is the force here, the stress will be jumping like this. Now, this jump here <coughs> will be far, far larger than this here. And this will easily take it to beyond the plastic limit. In many a times you will find for uh, such tugs, etcetera, the blade is uh, at the tip is all twisted here. Okay. You will find that it is not having a smooth surface, but it is all bent like that. It is very thin there, and the whole thing gets. In fact, I am having some photographs where you will find that this blade, so this is the blade. I think for a tug only I have. After a use of about 6 or 8 months, this part of the blade is no more there. Simply vanished. So, the, so the final blade contour is something like this. Remaining part all missing. It is not going to deliver you the power number one. Then this blade has been broken here. Other blade and this blade, there is no match about it. So, it will give you vibration definitely. But certain vessels you simply do not bother. Noise level is there, let it be there. And in fact, smaller vessels, not much of problem with the stresses because because of the corrosion allowance, because of the minimum thickness required by the classification and also the minimum, minimum plate thickness which is available in the market, all these things will dictate. You will find that uh, uh, the tugs and barges which are built uh, for river use or canal use do not have less than 8 millimeter plate thickness. Whereas, if you put 5 millimeter will also do, no, that will be sufficient, but they do not have less than 8 or 7 is not available, 6 will be too thin and I think 6 is the requirement. Okay. Any further questions? one small thing I will try to tell you that at the design stage,
In the design stage, we like many a times to estimate what is the fundamental frequency and vertical vibration. So, we try to calculate two noded vertical vibration for a particular ship which is under design. And if you try to use the Schlick type of formula, you will find that Schlick gave the equation something like this. Am I right? You just open that and see. Yeah, so it is of this order. So, for the design ship, we can say that put a suffix D all over and when we are designing a ship, we have something in front of us, a, a proof design or a proven design which has already served a similar thing. We try to look at that ship and say that we would like to design something like this. So, that ship we say is a basis, basis ship. Okay. So, on that basis we try to design. Now, for the basis ship, we assume that all the calculations and all the particulars are available. So, the same formula if applied to the basis ship will look like this. Now, if the current design is based on the basis ship design, then it will have the features of the basis ship. Okay. So, if it has the base features, then many of the things will match. It may match, it may not match, but they will be very close to each other. And therefore, the first assumption we make is that this coefficient of the basis ship is equal to the coefficient for the design ship. If this is true, then we say that the frequency of the basis ship or the design ship in comparison to the basic ship taking the ratio can be given like this. or Okay. Now, if we further assume that the basic ship, the design ship is having all the features of the basic ship, that means all coefficients must be identical. In that case, we can write that uh, delta B by delta D is equal to L length, breadth, graph and C B is equal to length, breadth, uh, sorry, breadth, graph of the design C B 
rho of water. Now, rho of water you cannot change for the design vessel and the basic ship. They are identical in the same sea they are operating. And I said all the features are identical, that means the CBs are same. Okay? So, this two ratio will work out to be And if I assume that the linear proportion of the two in the, uh, ships are identical and if we say that L B by L D that is basic ship to design ship is alpha, B of the basic ship, B of the design ship is also alpha and the corresponding drop is also alpha. That means, it is just a scaled. Uh, scaled up or scaled down ship. Okay? In that case, this will become alpha c. Correct? And L b q by L d q will also be alpha q. I assume that I midship varies as b into d q. In that case, therefore, I midship of D by I midship of basic will be 1 by alpha q. I think I will stop now for the time being. After we get this for an identical uh, type of shape, not the dimension, then plugging these values into this expression here, I will just write here for your convenience. So, N 2 V for the design vessel can be written in terms of the frequency of the basis ship. Now, I by this works out to be 1 by alpha to the power 4, this works out to be alpha cube, this works out to be alpha cube and then half power. So, 6 by 4, alpha 6 by alpha 4 gives you alpha square and taking a square root of that, you will get alpha into okay. So, if the entire features are identical, then it is very simple to estimate the frequency of the designed vessel on the basis of the basic ship frequency. At the design stage, when nothing is available to you except few main dimensions and for the ship which has already performed, built and served you have all the detailed calculations. Define displacement transferability of equipment TDE as maximum displacement of equipment from static condition. So, the ratio of static displacement of equipment under force F max. See, we have taken f max sin omega t, so under force f max. Okay. Now, maximum force transmitted through the spring
see the maximum force transmitted will be the force transmitted is k into x okay and under this you will find that sin omega t minus something something will come so k x t is the force so the maximum will be the maximum value of x t so I will write it as capital X here and maximum force transmitted You wanted some problems. I have got the problems here on vibration single degree freedom system. Let me see. Mostly taken from the book, you know. There are 20 problems here. If you want, you can Xerox and give back this to me. And they are from the books only, textbooks. take your own time if you want to give me today you can give me today if you want to give me tomorrow day after tomorrow next working day so okay. I think I'll stop now <laughs>